that would be an impossible act to follow. But yesterday's racing had its controversies, was a good day. I must say that the Doncaster is probably the most lacklustre I've ever seen, but then Lady Gay came to the fore. She saved that race with a, a record four Doncasters in a row. A remarkable achievement. Keith, welcome to you too down in Melbourne. How did you view it from Melbourne yesterday? I thought it was a special day, Bruce, because uh, Doncaster Day in Sydney's becoming better known now as Gay Day than the Mardi Gras. <laughs> Four in a row for Gay. Her dad, Tommy, holds a record, but he took a lifetime to get seven, didn't he? He sure did. I think the other thing in Sydney racing that is so obvious is Beedman versus Die. Yesterday they were just dominating the early part of the racing. Both, by the way, have cop suspensions during the carnivals. Beedman, a big story this morning. Yes, uh, Darren Biedman has been suspended and fined $10,000. Now, quite a few people are going to say Greg Hall last year in the Golden Slipper was fined $50,000. Didn't they go a little bit light on Darren? But I'd like to point out the Golden Slipper was a $2 million race. Yesterday's uh, derby was just a $1.1 .1 million race. The richer the race, the richer the fine. Mm. There were some other extenuating circumstances. I do think Greg had a little bit more form in that area than Darren did, and they've all been applied. But it would be bad luck if, if this competition between these two very, very fine riders ceased. But that Max, looks like it might be the case. Max, did yes, that involve the, the protest area? And if so, why was it tossed out in 10 seconds? Well, it was tossed out in 10 seconds, Keith, because uh, the interference to Tarn Per Lane, uh, uh, handed out by Beedman's Mount Denendry, wasn't considered sufficient to reverse the two-length margin between the two. Let's say it was worth uh, a length. Personally, I think the way these suspensions are going and the way that uh, the jockeys uh, are handling them, that we're going to have to look at relegation. Perhaps relegation is the only way where those horses that do meet interference get satisfaction or the connections okay. of those horses. That's the, that's the British way, isn't it, in uh, a lot of the, the cases overseas. Go to the Doncaster. Gay did make it four in her own. She quenetted it for the second year in succession. Shame as midfield on the fence, followed by Iron Horse, Catlin opening, buzz off, Ken Bell, and Anthems is last of all. Coming to the crossing at the 800 metres mark, Ravada's about a neck in front of all our mob. Kingston Bay is pulling a bit third. He's on the inside of Secret Savings at the 800 mark, followed by Pragmatism, and then Shame and Brackenbury. It's a pretty muddling pace in the Doncaster. Further back is Buzz off with Iron Horse. Catlin opening will have to do a big job, and the last couple of Ken Bell and Anthems as they near the turn. Inside the 600 mark, Ravada the leader from all our mob. Kingston Bay third, Secret Savings fourth. Shame with nowhere to go, and then Brackenbury. Catlin opening is about to take off around the outside, followed by Buzz Off, Iron Horse and Ken Bell. Over the rise, all our mob headed Ravada. Secret Savings a length away is running on strongly. Shame into the clear, then Catlin opening. All our mob, the leader at the 200. Secret Savings is coming at him strongly. Is it a Waterhouse Quinella? Secret Savings and all our mob have come away. They're fighting it out. Secret Savings, just the leader from all our mob and Larry Cassidy on Secret Savings for the Doncaster. Beat his stable mate, all our mob. Larry Cassidy back from Hong Kong, Gay Waterhouse only with uh, Secret Savings, an American horse for about four or five months. This is what she said to Max after the win. Well, I thought he and all our mob would fight the finish out. I knew that they were the two class horses. All our mob was the proven uh, uh, class horse and wasn't badly weighted. Uh, Secret Savings was poorly weighted, but he was the improving horse. Did you want Shane Dye to ride all our mob? Yes, I told Shane Dye to ride all our mob. He's quite happy. He, he said, you, let, you put me on what you want to do. Yeah. And I said, well, you ride all our mob. And I asked Larry to ride Secret Saving. I'm very, the stable's very much like that. I move the jockeys around. Well, a good result certainly for Larry and, uh, and uh, Shane missing out there, but what a good horse all our mob is. Keith, I just wonder, if, as we look at the replay of this and the slow tempo, Muwad, had he been Ravada, by how far do you reckon? Yes, I think he would have had a pretty easy win given the tempo of the race. It was a tempo that suited some and not others. Catlin opening was disappointing. Heavily back favourite, he finished six, but a good performance by Secret Savings. He's a six-year-old, lightly raced, nine wins from 21 starts. And Shane Dyer mentioned his dominance along with Darren Beebe. He even played a part in that, Bruce. He'd had a couple of wins on Secret Savings and told uh, or gave Larry Cassidy some winning riding advice. But well, Darren uh, didn't ride very well on uh, Catlin opening in that No, no, I, I scored Darren two out of ten uh, on Catalan opening, and that's the, that's the amount you get for jumping on the horse's back. It was a slowly run race. Uh, Catalan opening showed he can handle these conditions last uh, the Saturday before. Uh, he got him right back in the field where Catalan opening had no chance. Darren rode some fine races yesterday, the North. That was not one of his better rides. Briefly, Mewad, has he finished as a racehorse? Well, it's in the balance. Uh, it's not a serious tendon injury, but any injury to a, a 
a stallion prospect like Muad has got to be very, very serious. The next week or, sh uh, or so should tell the connections. Look, and it, also, on, Bruce, mate. I was going to uh, mention, if I may, that uh, Gay made the right decision coming back uh, for the Doncaster because uh, if you've not heard the news, I know you have, that uh, Dubai, the World Cup there, mm. was washed out with rain and Juggler will come back without racing. Yes, yeah, she, <laughs> she would have been very happy. He is coming back, Juggler, is he? Yes, without, he, he without won't, uh, won't run over there, okay, Bruce. That, that's, that's well, news. of course, Bruce, they couldn't go on in Dubai without Keith. That's why the rains came there. <laughs> <laughs> Keith, you're going to find it hard to get a trip without Juggler, I can tell you. Uh, let's look at the derby. Dramatic yesterday. Uh, $10,000 fine for Beeman. Watched an injury before the turn. He does angle. She's back second last. The winner comes from last die. And you'll see Denendri go across the field. And then she does run in at the end. It's a fabulous finish. Then Emerald Cut and Dan Endry and tailed off his Ebony Grove as they go to the 800 metres mark in the derby. It's Don Tristram the leader. Torbellino second. Turn Me Loose third on the outside of Grand Master. Flak Jacket is flat to the boards, followed by Might and Power. Captain Moonlight, Heroes Return. Then Tarn Per Lane, Star Covert. Intergaze is still about eight lengths off the lead as they come to the corner, followed by Gwyn Ganner. Then Emerald Cut, well back, he's a Dane. Dan Endry will have to do a mighty job and last is Ebony Grove. Coming over the rise, and Torbellino hit the lead in the derby from Don Tristram. Further out is Turn Me Loose, and then Flak Jacket Heroes return. Coming right down the outside, Tarn Per Lane. Intergazers now getting a split between them. Here's Dan Endry and Ebony Grove coming from Stone, motherless last. Dan Endry and Ebony Grove go to the lead together. It's Die and Beedman. Ebony Grove, Dan Endry. Oh, desperately close. Ebony Grove maybe. Fantastic finish. It's so appropriate. The two top jockeys. And when we look at the replay, you'll see the interference uh, where Darren Beeman uh, has copped his fine in his suspension. Here's an injury. She's coming across. She's basically crabbing across. Ebony Grove might have got this on protest. Anyway, have a look. He does get interfered with. Yes, there was, there was a slight hic hiccup there, but it was a demolition derby. There are a number of horses inside. Uh, Might and Power was one that, that had no luck at all in the straight and was beaten just over a length. I think Indigay should have finished closer, but that's the derby. Uh, the, the two... The two superstars fought it out again, mm. and to be a superstar jockey, you've, you've got to take risks. You've got to ride boldly. And that's why I think that uh, our racing controllers have got to look at a better way. It's okay. a great staying performance by Evany Grove. Uh, he gave the, uh, the inkling that he might be uh, something special in the spring down here. Uh, he was raw then. He's finally delivered. His form's been hard to catch. Some gear changes and access to the ball ring, Max. That's something we've not heard of officially down here. No, uh, we haven't heard officially up here either, but I believe it contributed much to the improvement of Ebony Grove yesterday. We've got to leave it there.